Okay, so this lecture is the first of a couple of lectures on introduction to measurement. So in physics, we measure several different quantities. It's a very mathematical science. And you will want to make sure that you understand what the symbols are that we usually use for those quantities and what the units are. Because, for example, you might be given a speed of 60 miles per hour, but when we use our kinematics kind of equations and different equations in physics, we'll want that in meters per second because everything needs to be either in, every length needs to be in meters, every time needs to be in seconds and so forth for our uh, equations to work. So there are three base um, measurements that we use. Our base units are distance, time, and mass. The symbol for distance is an X or a Y usually and it's measured in meters. Time, the symbol is T in our equations, and it's measured in seconds. And mass is the amount of matter in an object. Symbol is M, and because we're usually dealing with objects like people or cars, we deal in thousands of grams at a time, so the kilogram is the base unit for that. The other units that we use are derived units because they are quantities that are calculated using a formula. And so when we use that formula, we plug in the units and we derive new units for them. For example, speed or velocity, which is speed with a direction. The symbol for those, both of those is a V. And you're either going to take the, you're going to be taking a length measurement and you're going to be dividing it by time. So when you take length and you divide it by time, if you use our base units, then you'll have meters per second. Acceleration is the rate that you change your speed at. So it's speed divided by time, which would be a meters per second divided by a second, which turns out to be a meter per second times the inverse of a second or meters per second squared. And then force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Well, mass is a kilogram, and acceleration is a meter per second squared. So force is measured in kilograms times meters per second squared, or a Newton, capital N, because it's named after a person. So remember we have these base units, meters, seconds, and kilograms, and when we combine them into equations, we can get derived units. So your best bet is to make sure everything is in meters, everything's in seconds, and everything's in kilograms, and then when you plug them into the formulas, you'll get the right units. We also are going to be using metric measurements, and um, it's pretty important for you to know several of them. One that you'll see a lot is centi and milli and micro and nano. And you'll also see kilo a lot and sometimes mega. But these are the ones that are the most frequent. So when you see that prefix on a metric quantity like kiloliters or kilograms or kilometers, then you know automatically that kilo stands for a thousand or ten to the three. So one kilometer is equal to one times ten to the three, or one e to the three, that's the same thing, um, times ten to the three or e to the three, is equivalent to say, is replacing the K there. So if you had one micrometer, then that's equal to one E, and micro is 10 to the negative six, negative six meters. So I'm just replacing that mu with an E to the negative six. So it makes it easy for you to convert from, um, from the metric unit with the prefix to the base unit meters, right? So you want to make sure that you can do that. So that means that we are also using 
uh, scientific notation. Um, and we use really big numbers and really small numbers in physics sometimes. So it's going to be important for you to understand what they mean. So a good review is um, if you're multiplying by a positive um, exponent, 10 to the 3, then you're going to move your decimal to the right that many places. And if you um, are multiplying, or if you're multiplying by a negative exponent, then you're going to move your decimal to the left that many places. So you will be expected to understand scientific notation, and you also need to plug it into your calculator correctly. So if I wanted to plug this into my calculator, I would type 3 and then point and then 0, 0, 3. And then I'm either going to find the EXP button or the EE -E button and then type the exponent. I am going to tell you to avoid doing this because unless you put things in parentheses, you're going to end up with this being um, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then another 0 because it's going to multiply an extra 0. So do not do that. Okay? Instead, when you type, when you click on EXP or EE, which is usually a second function, um, that's automatically typing in the times 10 for you, and then you're just giving it the exponent. The other thing I see people do is they use a negative button. They don't use the negative button. Um, let's say that you wanted to put 3.003, and you're going to use the EXP button or the EE button. And let me just note, not the E to the X button and not the E button. Those are log buttons, so you don't want to do that. It's got to be EE -E or EXP. And if I want to put the negative there, I need to find the plus minus button to put in a negative. Okay? Do not use an addition button or a negative or a subtraction button. Okay? You just want to use the plus or minus button on your calculator and then 3 to put in a negative exponent. So here are some common metric conversions that we use in Glasslet. For example, we may have 40 centimeters. So you should know that centi is 10 to the negative 2. And so that would be 40 e to the negative 2 meters or I would just move it to the left, the decimal which is understood to be after the zero, two places to the left. That's how easy that is. Another thing you may see is kilometers. I may tell you that something is, or kilograms. I may tell you that something is 500 grams, and I want to know how many kilograms that is. So, when I do that, um, just to show you the math of it, one kilogram is one e to the three grams. So I would have to divide by a thousand when I'm doing this. And if I do that, then I'm just going to move this to place three places. Mm -hmm. Another one is kilometers. Um, I may give you 3,200 meters, and you'll need to change, uh, actually kilometers, and you'll need to change that to meters. Well, it would just be 30200, and then exponent 3 meters in your calculator. Or 30200 with three zeros added to it. This is a perfect example of a very large number that you would want to put in your into your calculator if you're making calculation with it in scientific notation. So this is, if I count how many places this is after the 3, I'm going to make this 3.02 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10 to the 7 meters. So when I plug that in my calculator, I can go 3.02 the EE button or the EXP button, 7. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So the other thing that's important is that we're using a lot of equations and sometimes you'll have an equation written down um, or available to you and it may make sense to you, but all equations should be dimensionally correct. So remember that speed is measured in meters per second, time in seconds, acceleration in meters per second squared, and length in meters. So if an equation is dimensionally correct, then that means that the dimensions on both sides of the, e of the equal sign should be the same. So if I put in meters per second for velocity and I square it, then I'm going to get meters squared all over second squared. So if this is a dimensionally correct um, equation, then when I take acceleration and time and multiply them, I should also get meters um, squared over second squared. So let's plug in the units for a, meters all over second squared times seconds. Well, if I do that, I notice that my seconds cancel out and I'm only left with meters per second. So meters per second is not the same thing as meters squared over second squared, which means that this is not a dimensionally correct equation. Let's do... Um, another example. So for example, um, a lot of times we have constants in our equations and our constants have units. And one constant is the universal gravitation constant in the gravitational force between two masses equation. So this is the equation to find the force between two masses that are attracting each other just because they have gra gravitational attraction. It's equal to this constant g times the mass of the first object times the mass of the second object divided by their distance squared. And what I want you guys to do is to pause for a minute and um, find the units for F. Remember that we want the units to be in kilograms, meters, and seconds. It's measured in meters. And M is mass, so it's measured in both of them are measured in kilograms. So if I put in the units for all of these, a force is a kilogram meter per second squared. M, uh, R is meters squared. And M times M would be kilograms times kilograms. So one of my kilograms is going to go away. I'm going to be equal to meters cubed all over seconds squared divided by a kilogram, which is going to be meters cubed all over seconds squared times kilograms.